next fly we're going to tie is Philip Mayer's Para Rab. This is my variation on the pattern. The reason I've picked this fly for us to tie is because it teaches us quite a lot. It teaches us about the concept of burying bulk and it teaches us how to tie effective parachute flies. Uh, this pattern is very effective for numerous reasons. The first reason is it has a very large search image. So when, when this fly is drifting in choppy water, fish can see it from a mile away. The other nice thing about it is it has a lot of inbuilt movement. It has a halo hackle of squirrel fibers. And as the fly is riding on the currents, these little fibers are moving all over the place. And that, I believe, is a trigger. And that gets fish to zap the fly. What you'll tend to find is that they hit this fly rather aggressively. Early season, I tend to fish the fly in larger sizes, size 14 to 16. That's quite large in our streams in the Western Cape in South Africa. But at the end of the season, I tend to fish this fly smaller, size 18s. Some people might call this an attractor dry fly. But in my opinion, it does imitate one or two food forms. It could imitate a spider or even a small crane fly. Be that as it may, it's a very effective fly. What I like about the fly is it presents very, very softly. It's got a large search image. It's easy to see, easy to fish, and it is one of those flies that instills confidence. It's a little bit trickier to tie, but well worth it. Okay, to tie this fly, we need the following. We need a light wire dry fly hook, size 16. We need some coq de lion fibers for the tail. We need some bites for the body. You could use turkey bites. I like using Egyptian goose bites. For the halo hackle, you could use squirrel tail or a little bit of vervet monkey guard hairs. I picked a skin up on the way to Somerset East earlier this year. And I started experimenting with it. Very nice. A little bit stiffer than the squirrel, but the markings are good and it holds its shape a lot better. Okay, then we need some polypropylene yarn for the post. We need some dry fly quality hackle and a little bit of fine UV dubbing. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my tying thread. And I'll start at the eye of the hook. And I'll make touching wraps all the way to the end of the hook shank. Now I'm going to cut off this tag end right over there. Okay. And then I'll bring the thread all the way back to the middle of the hook shank. Right over there. Now I'm going to take a Coq de Leon feather and I'm going to select five or six fibers for the tail of the fly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally brush these fibers back and get them nicely aligned. And then all I'll do is I'll just tear them off the stem of the feather. And I'm going to measure the tail. What I want is I want a tail that is the length of the shank of the hook. And using a pinch strap, I just tie that tail in nicely on top of the hook shank. We can then cut off the excess, untwist the thread to keep it coming in flat. That way you're going to keep bulk down. I hold the tail in place and wrap this thread in nicely, making sure that those fibers are on top of the hook shank. Wrap it in all the way till the end of the shank like that. Ah, that's nice. Okay, if you want to, you could lift this tail up now and give a wrap under the tail just to help keep the tail up slightly. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take an Egyptian goose bite, tear it off the feather, and then I'm going to take the bite and I'm going to not eat it. I'm going to just put it in my mouth and make sure I soften it up. Bites are quite brittle, right? So what tends to happen is, if you just use them in their dry form like that, they tend to crack and break. So the spit just softens them up a bit. Hmm, tasty. Okay, 
And what you'll notice if you look at this closely, you'll see it has a little vein on the one side. What I want to do is make sure that that vein on that bite is behind, okay, at the back of the fly or of the hook. So what I'll do is I'll hold that at a 90 degree angle to the hook shank. I'll make one wrap and then I'll pull the bite out right to its tip. Boom. Secure it a bit more and then wrap the thread all the way to the middle. That's a very definite way of tying in a bite. So what you've done is you haven't battled by tying in the tip. You've tied the feather in towards the middle and you've slipped it out to the tip. A very easy way of doing it, okay? Then I'm gonna take this bite in the hackle ply like this. You'll notice I've got the ridge of the bite at the back. And I'm gonna very gently just wrap it forward. Overlapping my wrap slightly, you'll notice the vein of the bite shows up on each wrap, giving you a lovely segmented effect. Ah, beautiful. And then what you're going to do is, using your left hand, tie the bite in very gently, give it a nice tight wrap, okay. You can let go with the hackle plier. Give another wrap. And then just cut it off like that. Okay, so there you've got the tail and the body of the fly. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thread to about a millimeter behind the hook eye. It's very important that you keep that little space over there. You'll see why later. Now I'm going to select a couple of vervet monkey guard hairs for the halo of the fly. It's very important that you get the guard hairs, not the soft stuff, those stiff, thin, spiky little hairs. They'll tend to be longer than all the other hair. Okay, so you just look for the guard hairs, bend the skin like this, there we go, and you just select a nice liberal bunch of guard hairs. I've got about, well, if I had to count them, I'd have about 15 hairs there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these guard hairs in a stacker. And I'm just, and when I lift them up like this, you'll notice that those tips are perfectly aligned. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to make sure that I measure these guard hairs and I want them to be as long as the tail and the shank of the hook combined. And I'll tie them in a millimeter behind the hook eye using a pinch strap. Just like that. And it's very important that those guard hairs are as long as the tail and the shank because that will balance the fly out. So when you actually cast this fly, it will land like this. It's not going to twist and twist the tippet. So it's a very user-friendly fly. Okay, cut off the excess like that. Tie the butt down nicely. Notice that small little space just behind there. Very important. And now I'm gonna take some white polypropylene yarn. Split it, don't need all of it. There we go. Cut it. Like that. And I'm gonna tie this in as a post. So what I do is I lift the thread up, put the polypropylene behind the thread, hold it like this with my left hand, and all I'm gonna do is slide the thread down and place it exactly where I want it. Give it a wrap or two. There we go. So now you've got the polypropylene on top of the hook shank. Now, very important. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to rotate this polypropylene so that it makes a 90 degree angle with the hook shank. So I'll rotate it like this. And then I'm going to give it a couple of figure of eight wraps. So all that is is, 
go back and across, under towards you, forward and across, under towards you. Now, you can use that technique to tie spinner wings as well. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to lift this up, hold it with my right hand, and then with my left hand. I'm going to take this thread and make a nice thread base at the base of the post. So I wrap with my left hand, hold the thread with my fourth finger of my right hand, and I wrap a little base a couple of millimeters up this post. So you just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. This is quite important because you need something to wind your hackle around. And this base gives that hackle a nice platform. Okay, so you'll notice there's a very distinct little base. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a nice dry fly hackle. I want fibers as long as the gape of the hook. So that's the distance between the point and the shank of the hook. So you can just measure that like that. Ah, that's perfect. Now what you'll notice is when it comes to hackle, hackle has two sides. It has a shiny side and that's the side you see when you look at the bird and it has a dull side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this hackle up against that post with the shiny side facing me. The reason I do this is because when I wrap this hackle around the post, the fibers are going to face slightly upwards, okay? So I won't trap fibers on consecutive wraps as I come down the post. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to strip off the one side of the hackle. So if I'm looking at the shiny side of the hackle, I've stripped off the left side. Strip a couple of fibers off at the bottom too, so you're tying bare hackle stem up on the post, okay? Measure it nicely, that's good. Tie it in like that, good. Making sure that the shiny side faces you. Okay, and you'll notice the one side is stripped off. Hold the hackle with your right hand and then wrap the thread up the post. Exactly like you did when you formed the base of that post. Wrap it up the post. Okay. And then back down. Nice. The next thing we're going to do is take a little bit of dubbing. Use small amounts, just very little. Okay, so take a little bit of dubbing, dub it onto the thread, make a wrap or two behind the post, make a wrap or two in front of the post, make another wrap or two behind the post, ending with a thread behind the post and letting it hang. So you've ended it behind the post, let the thread come around at the back of the post and it hangs in front of you. The reason you've done this is so that the thread is in position to tie the hackle off onto the base of the post. Okay, watch this. All I'm gonna do is, I'm going to wrap this hackle down the post. Touching wraps, wrap for wrap for wrap for wrap. Notice, Now, I don't need to support the post because it's stiff already. I can just wrap the hackle. I don't have to hold the post while I'm actually wrapping. Okay, and I come all the way down. And when I get to the base of the post, I hold this hackle off in my left hand. And I just make two or three wraps around the base of the post, trapping that hackle in nicely. Just like that, bring the thread forward in front of the squirrel and just let it hang. That's why you need the gap there. Notice I haven't tied anything off at the front of the eye, nothing. I've tied the hackle off on the post and that's what I mean by burying bulk. Now you just cut this off, 
To get this halo effect right around the post, you're going to manipulate these fibers with your left hand like that and just hold them in place. Then I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to dam the thread up against the base of these fibers. And what that will do is it will hold those fibers in place. Now all I do is I whip finish the fly. Like that. Okay. Cut that off. And now what I need to do is I need to preen the fly. So hold the post. Notice I've tied in the post nice and long for a very good reason. So I can work with it now. Okay, hold the post in place and just preen these fibers in place. Now you take your scissors, hold it at a slight angle, and commit to the cut. So I've got quite a prominent post there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and press it down in the post. So I've got a larger area to look at when this fly is actually drifting on the currents. And that basically is the para wrap. Mm -hmm.